You know, fanboys can be a really tough bunch to deal with. Uh, just most recently, Kieran Fire made another video. Well, not just recently, it was a few weeks ago. But I checked it out, and funnily enough, it's about Persona 5 and how it might come to Switch, and... To be honest, he sounded pretty nervous in the video, like it was a response to me calling him out on his video that he did two years back on Persona 5 not coming to PC or the Switch, where he have basically defended the game not coming to other platforms, despite Atlas never having any type of incentive to keep it on PlayStation or not bring it to PC or the Switch. You know, despite all the things I said, where it proved that people are interested in Persona 5, interested in bringing it out to other places. And what's funny about this video is that I tried to look at the comments. Clearly there are eight comments on the video currently, and I cannot view them. Which means he either blocked me, or it means that he used some other method to hide the comments from people who maybe aren't subscribed to him, or... I'm really not sure about the method, but... Well... I don't know. I don't know. Make of that what you will. And then we have the comments on my video, like Gentlemen Gamers here. I hope Persona 5 remains a PlayStation exclusive. There has been so much port begging from Nintendo fanboys ever since the 2018 Game Awards. Even in the remote possibility it does go to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation has Gravity Rush, Freedom Wars, Soul Sacrifice, Danganronpa series. Jesus Christ, reading your fucking sentences is like... I think a five-year-old could write better than you. And others as PlayStation-exclusive JRPGs. Um, Danganronpa's not a JRPG. This is why you cannot trust third-party developers to create PlayStation exclusives anymore. Sony nowadays has to rely on their 12 first-party in-house studios more than ever before, as well as their second-party relations with certain developers like Insomniac and Kojima Productions. I replied with, I guess I just don't understand why you wouldn't want a great game like Persona 5 on other platforms. I said in the video already, but this could be a good opportunity to increase the sales of the game while also getting it into the hands of more people. More gamers get to play a fantastic game, and the publishers and developers get more revenue and more exposure. Literally everyone wins in this case, so I can't understand why anyone would be against this. I don't have anything huge to substantiate this claim, but I'm fairly confident that Persona 5 will come to Switch and even PC at this point thanks to Sega's efforts to bring franchises to more platforms. But even then, you talk about yet more franchises the Switch and PC don't have. Almost like you can't make the same argument for the exclusives that they have that Sony doesn't. Oh, and by the way, Danganronpa isn't an exclusive. It really confuses me how someone can front load a comment calling people port beggars, and then not give a reason as to why simply asking for more games on a platform is somehow a bad thing. Only naming games that other people can't play unless they pay for a console like it's some kind of petty contest. Sorry to say this to you, but I'm much more interested in people being able to play a game and a company like Atlas getting more acclaim for the fantastic games that they produce, and not bragging about what games other people can't play and don't want others to because you're obsessed with how how many games your piece of plastic can play over others for some reason. Maybe instead of calling everyone names, we can make an argument against what I said about ports being a good thing using factual evidence as opposed to ad homs? Yeah, well, he didn't do that. When do they ever? As I said before, this is why Sony needs to strengthen their first party worldwide studio network even more than they already have done. Jesus Christ, that's a mouthful. Sony should have brought Atlas before Sega did. I think you mean bought, but okay. Atlas would have made an awesome addition to Sony's first-party worldwide studio network. Jesus Christ, that's another mouthful. Sony needs to acquire Kojima Productions already and permanently get Hideo Kojima under their belt. So as usual, they don't actually ever respond with anything substantial, or even related to the topic. And as usual, I responded with, And as I said before, tell me why they should and why things are better that way referring to them buying Kojima Productions. It seems more like you want to bait me into saying something else as opposed to actually attacking my argument. Tell me why it would be better for gamers and other companies to have Sony acquire Atlas and Kojima Productions. Tell me why having exclusives are a good thing as opposed to my arguments against it. When you respond with comments like these, we might as well be having a conversation about movies since none of what you responded to has made any logical connection to the arguments at hand. You've asserted things you think might be better, but that's only half an argument. You actually need to prove these things to do the other half of the work. Unless, of course, I am correct in assuming that this is nothing but bait to steer the conversation in your favor. Oh, and by the way, Sony's first-party worldwide studio network literally sounds like a buzzword you made up. Which, I mean, it kinda was. I think you understand what I'm getting at here, though. Fanboys are a tough nut to crack, and... Well, they very rarely make any logical sense to... 
well, really anything. And nothing says this better than with JTech TV, which, by the way, Gentleman Gamer here is a viewer of. I actually saw his comment on one of JTech's newest videos. And dear lord, is this video terrible? Not that you could see the comments anyway, and I can't comment on JTEX videos anyway because he blocked me a while ago. You know, because nothing says I believe in my opinion and can back it up with claims other than blocking people in the comments section and silencing them from responding to me. Jay, you are just... <laughs> You're something else. Let's get into his video because it kind of has a self-explanatory meaning to it, but to give some context before we start, it's about Days Gone and the lukewarm reception it's been receiving. I understand that I'm going to lose a lot of subscribers for what I'm about to say, but hey, fuck it. Yeah, Jay, hold on a sec. I mean, I only have 145 subscribers, but listen, man, I don't think you could lose any more subscribers, even if you tried. Your channel, I mean, it's not small by any means. It's got 8,000 subscribers. It's nothing to scoff at, but you've been doing this for a really long time. I remember when you were Pyro 2000, was it? Back in the day, making PlayStation Home videos, and that was back in, like, 2008. And that's, like, 11 years ago. And you still have yet to break the 10,000 subscriber mark. I mean, again, I've been doing this for a decent amount of time, too, but... Well, really, I don't make videos like this, nor do I actually make videos that often, so I, I don't expect to have that many subscribers. It would be nice, I guess, but... But anyway, Jay, I, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't really worry about losing subscribers. It's... You can't go much lower than zero. YouTube doesn't pay my bills, and it never has. Okay, good. That's probably a good thing. YouTube doesn't pay my bills either, and to be honest with you, I make controversial videos all the time. I mean, I say controversial, but sometimes people will agree with them. My last video I made responding to Kieran Fire was kind of controversial in and of itself. It has 24 dislikes and 24 likes, pretty much split right down the middle. Now, I think this is mostly because people read the title of the video and didn't actually watch the video, which I could say is kind of the fault of the people not actually doing their due diligence, but I also take partial blame for that because it's kind of clickbaity, if I'm being honest, but I, I think it describes the video well, but it's just, yeah, I'll do better in the future. But anyway, yeah, I'm not really relying on YouTube either. In fact, if I was relying on YouTube, I wouldn't have gone to college, gotten a degree, and am currently working my way up the ladder, and possibly going back for a second degree, a higher degree. So, Jay, I guess we're both in the same boat here, so let's get that out of the way and start this. Let me just say, for the PC community and the Xbox community that has been talking bad about Days Gone because of a bug and a glitch... No, 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 no. I... I if anyone's talking about a bug and a glitch, people will talk bad about Days Gone because this shit is unacceptable. And that's not something I believe is Sony's fault in particular, or necessarily Sony's fault. It's just the fault of the industry. People rush games out all the time, and we gotta call them out when they're there. Games like, oh, I don't know, Assassin's Creed Unity get rushed out the door, and because of that, they perform badly on all consoles, and even the PC. So, I mean, we just call them out when we see them, Jay. It's... I, I know where you're going with this. You're gonna say that this is all because it's a big plot against PlayStation, but y you need to shut up. You guys are bold. You guys are so fucking bold. Well, we're bolder than you, Jay. We don't block people from our comments section, nor delete them. So, I guess we're bolder than you'll ever be. Maybe you can respond to this video and actually be bold yourself, instead of being a pussy behind the comments section. Xbox. Quantum Break. Um, that's a game. Yeah. You want me to help you out? I... Yes, I don't know what that means. Um... I can make a fucking video of all the bugs and glitches people have found. Reviewers have found. In Quantum Break? From what I recall, there weren't that many bugs and glitches, at least nothing out of the ordinary. Inevitably, games will have bugs and glitches. 
For example, Bloodborne, which you have up on the top right corner of your screen here on the PlayStation home screen or whatever the fuck it is, that game had a huge glitch where you could skip most of the game and beat it in, like, what, under a half an hour? Just to do my due diligence, because God knows JTEC won't do that, I actually looked up what the hell he was talking about, and, well, let's look at this article. Alan Wake developer Remedy's new Xbox One and PC game, Quantum Break, launched on April 5th to a mostly positive critical reception and strong sales, but it hasn't been entirely smooth sailing. Players have discovered a number of issues with the PC version, and now Remedy has apologized for the problems and published a list of known issues. So, as you can see, there are a couple on the Xbox One, but, I mean, it was mostly the PC version. Which, by the way, most people didn't buy the PC version because of the Windows Store and how shit it is. I mean, I still haven't bought anything on the Windows Store, so what does that say? And aside from that, too, it eventually came to Steam, Quantum Break, I mean. And most of the performance issues could be completely removed by removing FXAA from the options menu. I said as much in my review of the game, so... Well, again, Jay, I did my due diligence and you didn't, but please, make that video so you can prove me wrong. We both know you won't, though, or if you do, it'll be filled with misinformation, as most of your videos commonly are. The PC community? Don't get me started on you guys. You guys introduced us to early access, literally. D yes, Steam early access is a thing. You guys pay for bugs and glitches. What? Please, uh, aside from Arkham Knight, please show me a game that was buggy and glitchy. And I mean, you'll probably get about five decent examples, but those five decent examples are no more than what a console generally has. And even if something's a bad port, like Monster Hunter World, for example, it's still better than the 25 FPS bullshit you guys have to put up with on your consoles. So, I mean, it's still the better version, isn't it? Maybe you should shut up and do your research, Jay. The PC fanboys have more bugs and glitches in the games they brought than all of the home console gaming systems combined this whole fucking generation. Okay, I, do you intend to prove that? Please, go on, prove that. But you're not going to. You're going to make a claim, assert something, and then... not actually prove it. Also, Jay, can you back up from your mic a little bit? You're like... <laughs> if 4D existed, my face would be getting all wet from the spit that's literally coming out of your mouth onto your mic. Please, stop deep-throating your mic. Just back up a little bit, tone your voice down a little bit, no one wants to listen to this. I mean, luckily, I've edited this down a little bit so that, you know, this isn't going to be as egregious for people who watch. But, Jesus Christ, watch this original video and see. You guys should shut the fuck up. Xbox fans, all your bug and glitchy games that used to be exclusives are now on a PC and they're, let me say, still buggy and glitchy. Again, Jay, do you intend to prove this? No? Well, then maybe you should shut the fuck up and, you know, actually do your due diligence. Sh shut the fuck up or do your due diligence, really. I mean... <sighs> and if the PC fans want to come to the comments section and fight me, you can. Jay, for, for starters, going to a comment section and fighting someone on someone's video who already deletes comments is pathetic. Because you know that's a losing battle for whoever comes in on that, because you're such a coward, and you, you can't fight people normally. You can't even debate. It's sad to me how childish you really are. But go on about fighting people in the comments section. It's funny, though, because the comments have been disabled on this video. You're such a coward that you can't even keep that lie up to yourself, can you? That's probably the reason why you guys always have to mod your games. You have to always make them better than what the developers release them as. Well, I mean, that's generally what mods are for. They make games better than what the devs release them as, at least in most cases. I mean, Sekido, Shadows Die Twice, the game you're seeing here, was released, and it's actually a decent port on PC. The main issues are the other things that FromSoft have done with it. 
such as locking the game to 60 frames per second or not offering widescreen support, and I mean ultra-wide support for monitors. That's, that's generally a problem with From Software games. But mods have come out, unlocked the frame rate, and fixed all these issues, made the game better. And even without this mod, it's still better than the console version. Wouldn't you agree, Jay? But of course you wouldn't, but of course you wouldn't have a reason as to why either, because you're an idiot. Nobody is perfect. Especially not you, Jay. Especially not you. We know that too well from this channel. And some of our favorite games, my games, and some of your favorite games, have bugs and glitches. Jay, you literally about sound like you're on the verge of tears in this video. And I, I'm honestly not sure why. Does people and the gaming industry at large bother you so much when they critique Days Gone for being apparently bland, for being apparently buggy. I mean, it, it shouldn't bother you that much, Jay. I mean, I've played games in the past that I like that the industry has hated, and of course it's bothered me to a point, but not to where I literally sound like I'm about to break down crying, Jay. One such example is recently Travis Strikes Again was released, a No More Heroes game. And I kind of feel like that game is getting an unfair rep. But that's also because channels like RGT85 review it, clearly don't understand the game, clearly don't understand what they're talking about, clearly don't understand Suda51, and will basically just copy-paste everyone else's reviews, and so the story goes. But again, I defend the game, and I'm not on the verge of tears, I just say my piece and be done with it. Maybe you should do the same thing for Days Gone. Make a video explaining why the game is good, what you like about it. Explain, um, you know, arguments that people have made against it. Try to debunk them. I mean, this is how productive people do things, Jay. How smart people do things. Not even smart people, it's just how normal people do things. People don't sit there on the verge of tears because their game is, you know... But I understand, though, you have to take every PlayStation exclusive for what they are, because, let's be honest here, compared to the PC, at least, you don't have nearly as many games. Fallout. Three or four. Bugs and glitches. As every Bethesda game has bugs and glitches? But that's a third-party game. Weren't we talking about first-party games here? Grand Theft Auto. Three, four, or five. Bugs and glitches. Again, third-party game and across all platforms. What's your point? All of the fucking Assassin's Creed's bugs and glitches. Okay. So now you're just talking about games in general, and y yeah, Jay, yeah. Games come out with bugs and glitches. But here's the thing about that, Jay. It's all on a spectrum. Some bugs and glitches will be worse than others. Some people will be able to overlook certain g bugs and glitches and be able to play the game just fine. Well, maybe that means that Days Gone is the exception to that rule and doesn't have that luxury. It's a technical nightmare without any of the substance. It's not a good game, and it's a buggy mess to boot. What do you have to say about that, Jay? Call of Duty. Bugs and glitches. To be honest, I don't even like the Call of Duty franchise, but I can't even remember a single time where they've had really bad technical issues. In fact, they're usually pretty well optimized, especially for consoles. There's not a single game that has not released over the last five years of this generation that has not had to have been patched or updated in some way to fix a bug or glitch. Yeah, and it's kind of sad, isn't it? I mean, most developers won't release a full game, you know, patched and everything, and they'll just release a game that's broken and expect it to be fixed later, much like one of the more recent examples, Anthem. I mean, Jesus Christ, what the hell happened with that game? But, Jay, you're defending this. Uh, and, and, and yes, I know, inevitably, a game will have a bug and a glitch, like I said, but, Jay, defending it isn't... isn't the right way to go. Okay? <laughs> just take my advice on that one. And you guys know. Open world games have at least one or more bugs or glitches. Saying any game has one or more bugs or glitches is something, but does Days Gone have bad bugs and glitches? I mean, according to Digital Foundry, the video I watched on their Days Gone stuff and their performance tests and everything, it doesn't actually look like it has that many bugs or glitches. I really don't even know where this argument is coming from, Jay, because most of the complaints I see about this game is that it's just boring and it's dull. 
And really, that should be the thing you're attacking instead of bugs or glitches, unless you're conflating the two, which is not correct because they're not the same thing. I understand what I saw in 2016. I saw a game that I already knew I wanted day one. And that's sad, Jay. You pre-order games and that's sad because you are just the perfect example of someone who will just buy anything a company gives you and you'll just lap it up because you're just so loyal to them. And it's sad. You won't think about the bigger picture. You won't think about, wow, does this company really have my best interests in mind? It's pathetic, Jay. And then I saw each and every one of the Xbox fans and PC fans wonder, when is this game going to come over? I mean, it's a matter of time before a PlayStation 4 emulator is completed and released, so eventually it'll come here. If I'm being perfectly honest, none of the PlayStation exclusives, maybe aside from Bloodborne and Horizon Zero Dawn, actually look interesting to me. Maybe Spider-Man? Maybe. But I I've played Ratchet & Clank, and it's okay, it's a good game. And I've played Uncharted 4, and it's a great game. But I'm not going to go out and buy a whole nother system to play it. I mean, I have a PlayStation 4, but if I didn't have one, I wouldn't go out and buy one just for this. Jay, you can also make the same argument for games that we have that you don't. And you can sit there, because I've seen you make this argument before, but you could sit there and act like these games aren't as big as God of War, these games aren't as big as Days Gone, these games aren't as big as Spider-Man, when that's completely subjective, Jay. Sometimes big AAA games will be less good, objectively. They will have less content, they will have less replay value than indie games. And those are smaller games that generally come to more platforms. So you're going to act like this is some big uh, point against us, but it, it really isn't. We were in the age of games being confirmed as timed exclusives and already getting released on other platforms, and I learned that myself the hard way, um, that if a game is made by a third-party developer, it's going to come over. Well, that's not really true. Bloodborne's a third-party game, isn't it? Um, Ratchet & Clank was made by Insomniac, and so was Spider-Man, and those games are, you know, made by Insomniac. They're a third-party company. And they've shown that they're wanting to branch out more. They've made two other IPs on other consoles. But anyway, actually, there are PlayStation exclusives coming over to PC now. Um, the most recent example are the David Cage games. Then there's this other game I played way long ago called Journey. I can't wait to play that on PC when that eventually comes over. So eventually, yeah, maybe Days Gone might come to PC. Maybe God of War might come to PC. We know we don't know. I mean, those games aren't third party. They're owned by Sony. But you never know. I mean, I think, from what I remember, um, Quantum Dream owns all the IPs to uh, Heavy Rain, Detroit Become Human, and Beyond Two Souls. So they probably would have had to sign a contract to have those games come over to PC. So they're probably testing the Wooders. And even if they come over years later, that's still, you know, <laughs> that doesn't matter. It's still the better version, Jay. And most people are willing to wait for the better version. You know, I didn't even talk about God Eater 3. It was only on a PS4 and PC, but I didn't even talk about it because I knew it was going to go to another platform. I think a month later it ended up getting announced for the Switch. Sure you did, Jay. Sure you did. But this game... You guys didn't know the developer until earlier this month when a developer diary came out on the PlayStation's channel letting you know that the developer had made all the Siphon filters, which is a, a PlayStation exclusive series. Well, actually, I've never seen this video you talked about. I've known about Studio Bing. I think that's her name. I think. Sony Bing? Whatever the hell it was. I don't really care. Um, but I played one of their games when it came out on the Vita. Uncharted Golden Abyss, and it was average, I guess. I've never played the Siphon Filter games, if that is how you actually say it. I always thought it was Siphon Filter. But anyway, I've known about them for a long time, Jay. So what are you getting at here? And the developer also made Uncharted Golden Abyss, which is an exclusive game for the PlayStation Vita. Then you understood that the game had no chance coming to your platform. Um, Jay... What does that have to do with anything? 
right, Jay? Halo, a series that was traditionally on Xbox, exclusive to Xbox, starting with Halo 3, I believe. That's when we knew that Halo 5 was never going to come to PC and that the Master Chief Collection was never going to come to PC. Do you understand the issue here, Jay? Just because something is typically exclusive to another console doesn't mean anything. It could always change. I'm not saying that these games will be coming to PC definitively, but I'm saying that they might at some point. You don't know. I don't know. None of us know. So instead of your curiosity or uh, hype for the game or just hope that the game might get ported to your platform of choice later on down the line, all of that turned into hatred. What? Jay, I... I don't hate anyone in this transaction. The only person I could possibly hate is Sony, but honestly, by this point, I'm apathetic towards it. I mean, I just have this attitude now where if Sony wants to port something over, that's awesome. Do that. But if you're not going to, which has been most of the attitude they've displayed thus far, well, then I'm, I'm just apathetic. I don't care anymore. I, I mean, like, maybe Days Gone does look like a decent game, Jay, but I, why, why would I care about it if I can't play it? And why would I hate anyone involved in this process? <laughs> the only people that hate anything are you, Jay. You hate that people are finally speaking out against exclusives. You hate that people make videos on you. That's why you block them. That's why you try to silence them. There was one point where you claimed one of Rag's videos. You reported it, and you false flagged him. Jay, you're a coward. You hate that people are bolder than you. You hate that people speak out against this stuff. You're the only person who's angry here, Jay. When you went on the internet, you tried to find anything bad. You did the same thing for Spider-Man. Oh, it doesn't have enough puddles. It's downgraded. Jay, that was a very minor complaint, and I mean, honestly, if it had turned into something bigger, which it didn't because it has actually purported that the graphics were improved in that game, then people probably would have spoken out against it, but it, it that wasn't the case because they proved it wrong. Jay, people just want to not be lied to on the internet, and when they point things out like this, they're simply asking a question. They're not going in with the expectation of automatically hating a game or trying to call them out or find any dirt against them to make them look bad. People just want to know things, Jay. People just want to know if the game that they were promised is going to be, you know, uh, actually the game that they were promised at the beginning. Uh, I think Spider-Man was uh, announced like two years before that, but... Jay, people just don't want to be lied to. That's that's all there is to it. Oh, God of War, Kratos can't jump. It's bad. Well, people were very reluctant about God of War. Even Shuhei Yoshida, the guy who, um, you know, approves all of these projects for PlayStation, was very, very apathetic towards this project. He was... He was not into it. And luckily, they proved him wrong. I mean, I'm glad that God of War did something new. Uh, Jay, you're going to have to point out these places where people weren't rightfully apathetic or annoyed with the decision. Oh, Bloodborne, it's not good. It's not as good as Dark Souls 2. It's bad. No one is ever going to say that Bloodborne is worse than Dark Souls 2. In fact, I, I think most people will agree that Bloodborne is probably one of the best in the series. Uh, maybe aside from Dark Souls 1 and Sekiro, in my opinion. But... Jay, point these people out, please. You're 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 making all of these claims, and I still have no proof of it. I I could definitely say there's probably no proof to say that Bloodborne is worse than Dark Souls 2, but you guys do this with every fucking exclusive. Jay, again, prove this to me, please. Show me. And every fucking time, it bites you in the ass. I'm surprised that you guys are not tired. How's it bit us in the ass? I mean, you're saying that we did this thing and we didn't, so how could it even bite us in the ass? But how would it bite us in the ass, Jay? I really am. Oh, uh, this is Dreams. Um, They're working hard. Everyone that has Dreams Early Access, they're working hard. They're making literally dreams come true. Um... This game still exists? Wasn't this the uh, the game that 
uh, the people who did Little Big Planet announced way back when. I'm surprised this is finally coming out. I mean, I'm glad, I guess. It looks like a decent game. Uh, anyway. Wait, actually, doesn't that say Early Access? Jay, didn't you just make fun of Early Access? You're an idiot. I remember someone that I don't believe is specifically an Xbox fanboy or specifically a PC fanboy because he does own multiple platforms of different people's choices, and that is Broken Games. What? You know you could still own multiple platforms and still be a fanboy of something, right? I've known people that own PCs and are still fanboys of Nintendo and will defend every action. Jay, your definition of a fanboy is completely... You're, you're just retarded. That's that's literally all there is to it. You, I know I'm playing the semantics game here, but how else can you construe this? I remember him saying that Dreams was trash. And the live stream is still up. But all of his Twitter posts of him saying that have been deleted by himself. Okay. What is that supposed to prove? So, again, people like talking shit until something comes out. Jay, are you implying that Broken Games, which was my old channel name, by the way, but I don't think he's talking about me. Obviously he's not. I haven't played Dreams. But, Jay, are you implying that this guy because he deleted his Twitter posts about it, thinks that it's not trash anymore? Or that he was talking shit before, and now it just shut him up because this game is apparently so good to you? Jay, this is, this is literally all hearsay. You're literally making things up in your head. Then they can't talk shit no more. Because when everybody has the game, when everybody's streaming the game, when everybody's posting YouTube videos of the game, when everybody's posting a photo mode pictures of the game, well, you're just going to be sitting there watching us enjoy the game. Jay, that long pause tells me that you had nothing of substance to say following that statement, and you literally just backed it up with, well, you're just going to watch us there streaming the game, enjoying the game. As if that's not something people might already do on other platforms in every other game. I would tell you guys to play some great AAA exclusives of your choice, whether you're on Xbox or PC, but as we all know, you, you don't have any. And Jay, we would tell you to play a game at 60 frames per second, 4K at your leisure, or whatever graphic settings you want to, with all the mods you want, with any control style you want to, but... We know you can't do that. Jay, the exclusive argument is... It, it, it's its anemic. It's stupid, Jay. No one cares about what exclusives you have. What you should care about is that more people can't play your game. You're acting so elitist and like such a douchebag, and it's, it's sad. When a PC exclusive comes out on the PC, I want everyone to play that game. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want a great game from a developer to not get more... Uh, you know, sales and more recognition to possibly make better games in the future, to make improvements, to to succeed. Why wouldn't you want that, Jay? It's just sad that you want to act like you're so elite and above everyone else when you're in a puddle, Jay. You're in a bubble. You're sitting there in an echo chamber playing, <laughs> playing your exclusives, sniffing your own farts. And it's, people find that sad, Jay. People really find that sad. And I, I'm surprised you're not self-aware enough to pick up on that yet. That's why your focus has turned to Days Gone. Prove me wrong, please. Jay, I don't, I don't need to prove you wrong. You, you're just, you're... There's nothing to prove wrong here, Jay. Your idea of proving people wrong is making stupid-ass statements and then not backing them up with anything. I, I, Jay, go back to school, dude. Go get a degree. Go and take a debate class. Learn how this shit works, Jay. You're how old now? I, I, I guess you're in your mid-twenties like me. And I'm not saying I'm any better than you, necessarily. I mean, although I do kind of think I'm better than you, and it's not hard for anyone to think that they're better than you. But, Jay, go go back to school. Do something with your life other than sit here like a five-year-old debating about video game consoles. Like, it's the NES era. Like, you're five years old. It's, it's pathetic, Jay.
It's, it's really, really pathetic. Anyway, this was a kind of, you know, all over the place video. I didn't really have any specific thing to say to Jay or any specific point to make other than, Jay, this is sad, and you are just a coward. You're pathetic, you're a fanboy, and this is why you have so many dislikes on your videos, okay? And Jay, please, don't submit a false DMCA claim on this video. I will fight it back, I will win, and, and I'm just gonna make another video about it showing that you do this shit, that you still do this shit. This is not fair use, Jay, and you should know that. But, again, you act like a five-year-old, so maybe you don't know that. Anyway, have a good one, guys. Take it easy.